The DualSense Edge controller costs 200 US dollars, 130 dollars more than the regular PS5 controller. Here are 14 differences between the two controllers. You may know about the big differences, but I'm sure there's a few that you didn't even realize. The first big difference is a huge feature on the Edge controller where you can replace the joystick module. Both the left and right stick modules can be swapped out in case they go bad with stick drift. The stick modules cost $20, so pretty inexpensive in my opinion, and it takes just seconds to quickly swap them out. The Edge controller also has changeable stick caps. In fact, the controller comes with two different sizes, while the stick caps here aren't hollow and the out-of-the-box variations aren't as high as the Xbox Elite controller offering. The swappable sticks are still a good feature. I'm sure third-party companies will be releasing new variations of these sticks even if Sony doesn't. Difference number three, we finally have a PlayStation controller with mappable back buttons. These are a huge feature for me personally. Some of you might think they're useless outside of competitive FPS games, but in fact, they're a huge help even with single player games like God of War Ragnarok and Forsaken. Returnal is another high paced action game they're really useful for. Here I'm switching between the weapons in God of War and in Forsaken swapping between the different magic types is a breeze. It's a lot easier than reaching for those left and right d-pad buttons. Now while the edge controller maintains the adaptive trigger feature, there's actually an added bonus with the triggers. You can do manual adjustment of the trigger length. You can quickly switch between full length, medium length and short length for an optimal experience with whatever you're playing. Difference number five is about the new menu option in settings. Here you can do all kinds of customizations to the controller from a software standpoint. You can remap all the button layouts, you can adjust the triggers and stick sensitivity and vibration intensity. And best of all, each setup can be saved to different personalized profiles. And that takes us to difference number six, which are these physical buttons to go along with the personalized control profiles. These function buttons can quickly swap between your preset control profiles. The buttons can also adjust game volume and chat balance on your gaming headset. Now everything I've talked about so far adds value to the Edge controller. But this next item I'm going to talk about is actually worse than the cheaper PS5 DualSense controller and that's the battery. The DualSense Edge has a smaller 1050 milliamp hour battery. That's 33% less than the 1560 milliamp hour battery of the regular PS5 controller. I sat down and tested the battery life of the DualSense Edge and that lasted 6 hours. In comparison, the regular PS5 controller can last anywhere between 8 to 12 hours. Now Sony of course knows about this lower battery life. I think they really wanted to add all the new features while keeping the size of the controller the same. And the battery size is pretty much what got sacrificed. That's why the DualSense Edge comes with a long 2.8 meter USB braided cable. There's also this little connector housing which locks the wire into the controller. With that, the controller functions as a true wired controller. In fact, many professional players might prefer a wired controller due to the low latency. Now let's talk about the weight. With all those added features, the DualSense Edge controller weighs 325 grams. That's about 44 grams more than the standard PS5 DualSense. Now I'm going to get into more of the cosmetic differences and difference number 10 is easily notable. The new touchpad is finished in black with these mini play button patterns on it. it looks pretty cool if you ask me. Difference number 11 is the plastic and the physical feature on the trigger buttons. There's now some added grip to the trigger buttons. It's similar to what we see on the Series X controller. Speaking of grip, difference number 12, the Edge controller now has soft rubber grips on the back here. In comparison, the standard PS5 controller has hard plastic grips. 
The second last difference I'm going to talk about, difference number 13, is about the light indicators on the new edge controller. When I charge my dual sense, I sometimes have a difficult time seeing the orange light indicator. On the edge, they actually improved that. The light strip on the edge controller is notably thicker and brighter. Here you can see the difference when the two controllers are charging. You'll also notice that thicker and brighter light while you're playing games. The last thing I want to talk about difference number 14 is just the little cosmetic differences we have. On the front, the D-pad and the buttons right here are in transparent black instead of white. This area is removable and has a shiny finish to it. So there you have it, 14 differences that I found between the DualSense Edge and the regular PS5 controller. If I miss something that you have found, let me know in the comments below.